Okay, so good morning everyone. I bring you uh, a physics question uh, under kinematics and uh, those of you that are in different universities, you might be at Mulungush University, you might be at Unza or CPU. I'm sure you've encountered this question before, especially for those of you that are using college physics for your studies so um, before we solve this question make sure that you subscribe make sure that you hit the like button and also share to others and for those of you that do not have uh, the college physics book um, make sure that you inbox me on this whatsapp line and also uh, uh, make sure that you ask questions uh, where you're not uh, clear okay so now this question falls under kinematics. Those of you that are following my channel uh, under physics, I'm doing kinematics and hope you are learning something. The Daytona 500 Autores. So we have the question here. They're saying, in the Daytona 500 Autores, a Ford Thunderbird and a Mercedes-Benz are moving side by side down a straightway at 71.5 meters per second. The driver of the Thunderbird realizes that she must make a pit stop and she smoothly slows to a stop over a distance of 250 meters. She spends 5 uh, seconds in the pit and then accelerates out reaching her previous speed of 71.5 meters per second. After a distance of 350 meters, now at this point, how far has the Thunderbird fallen behind the Mercedes-Benz, which has continued at a constant speed? Okay, so now, like I always encourage my students, the first thing that we do it, uh, in physics is simply to write the data. That is the first discipline. So we are going to say data here. We're going to write our data like this okay now we have been taught that we have some initial speed of 71.5 meters per second at the same time we have also been taught that the distance that was covered by the thunderbird was simply so we can say t d TH for Thunderbird, we have been told that the distance was simply 250 meters, like this. Then we have been told that the time that the, uh, the Thunderbird spent in, in the pit before she accelerated outside, we have been told that that time T Thunderbird was simply 5.0 seconds. Now we have also been told that these guys, after the Thunderbird accelerated out, we have been told that she reached out uh, to the previous speed of 71.5 meters per second after a distance of 350 meters. So we can simply say that our distance 2 is going to be equal to 350 meters meters like this this is our data we shall utilize this information to simply solve this interesting physics problem now it is very important that when you're solving a physics question you come up with some diagram so we are going to draw this particular vehicle here this particular vehicle here like this we can also draw another vehicle of this manner, like this. We can name this vehicle as the Thunderbird. We can also name this vehicle as the Mercedes-Benz, like this. Now, we have been told that the Thunderbird had covered a distance to some extent within the distance of about 250 meters. Then we have been told that when this person reached at this particular uh, uh, instant, 
We are, were taught in the question that there was a pit stop. In other words, the car uh, uh, got in the pit like this, this pit stop. Then we have been taught that this vehicle spent about 5.0 seconds in the pit before this person accelerated to uh, uh, the previous speed. Now we have been taught that when this person accelerated from this speed stop, this person covered some distance from here to here, which we can simply call the final, uh, the, uh, the final distance within this total distance. So we can draw this vehicle here to simply signify that this was the distance that was reached from here. Now, we were also taught that in the question that this bends had moved a distance such that it was a little bit forward this vehicle because the question is saying uh, at this at the uh, uh, is saying how far has the thunderbird fallen behind so we expect the thunderbird to simply fall behind the bends so we expect this bends to be at least a little bit forward what or ahead like this ahead of the thunderbird now the distance from this particular point to this particular point we have been taught that this distance is simply 350 meters like this now the first thing that we are supposed to do is to simply find the time that it took the thunderbird to simply move from this particular location to this particular location but then we know that some displacement is equal to 1 over 2 the, in, the, the final velocity plus the initial velocity multiplied by some time. But we know that the distance that was covered in the first place was simply a 250 meters equal to 1 over 2, like, like this. Now, since we are starting from this particular location to this particular location, we can simply say that the initial velocity from this, from uh, here to here, is going to be zero. Then the f the the, uh, the uh, sorry uh, the, yes yes the initial velocity from here to here is going to be zero because we started from here. So we are going to consider this velocity initial as zero. Then we are going to consider the velocity here as the, the final velocity. So I'm going to put a uh, uh, seven to one. 0.5 is my final velocity and 0 as my initial velocity because we are starting from this point multiplied by the time. So now this is just the same as 250 equal to 71.5 t like this. Mathematically you can cross multiply 250 multiplied by 2 you are going to find a 500 equal to 71.5 t over 71.5 over 71.5. You will find that your time 1 is going to equal to, if you divide by 71.5, you are going to find 6.99. So we can therefore round it off and it's going to be 7.00 seconds like this. We can name this time 1. Now we can also consider the time that it took for this person to move from here to here. And name that one as our time 3. The same concept applies. Some displacement to equal 1 over 2. The final velocity plus the initial velocity multiplied by some t. But we know that we are now considering for the whole distance. So we can therefore say that some displacement is going to equal to. Now. Uh, what is going to happen is that we will still consider the same uh, concept, okay, the same concept, this is the speed rather, the speed, the same concept is going to apply, because we are told that she reached out to a previous speed of 71.5, so I'm going to put my 71.5 here, plus some zero, multiplied by some time, right, now, the displacement here, for the second occasion, is going to be 350 meters, like this, then 350 meters equal to 71.5 t over 2, like this. 
we can cross multiply and it's going to be 71.5t equal to now 2 multiplied by 350 is going to be 700 like this then we are going to say that 71.5 over 71.5 our time if we divide by 71.5 we say 700 divide by 71.5 we are simply going to find a 9.79 seconds we can name this as time 3 now when you look at the question they are saying that when you look at the question the question they are saying that she spends five seconds in the pit so we are also going to consider the time that she spent in the pit so we are going to say that some total time within this distance is going to equal to 7.00 seconds plus these five seconds that was spent in the pit plus this uh, uh this time which was which was covered for the whole distance so it was 9.79 like this so t total is going to equal to we are going to add plus 7 plus 5 we are going to find 21.79 seconds as the total time now we know that we know that the the, velo the velocity is equal to some change in uh, 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 the displacement, the change in the displacement over some time. We want to find the change in displacement. We can make the change in displacement the subject like this. Now we know that, okay, we know that the change in some x is going to equal to 71.5 multiplied by the time which was seven like this like this then if we multiply if we multiply this time with 71.5 like this we are going to find we are going to find something like this Okay, we are going to find 1,558 uh, uh, meters. So this is the distance that was covered. Uh, yeah, this was the distance that was covered. Now, going to the question they're saying, at this point, how far has the Thunderbird fallen behind the Mercedes Benz? So when you multiply these two, you find 1,558 meters. That is exactly the distance the, uh, 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 the Thunderbird had fallen behind the Mercedes Benz. So therefore we can see that the change in some X is going to equal to 1,558 meters. So make sure that you understand this concept. Make sure that you understand whatever has been done here. And for those of you that are not clear, make sure that you inbox me on this line and I'll be able to respond to you. Thank you so much.